Hi folks, we'll just start the old uh, weekly or two weekly tour again off of the plot in the old greenhouse near home again. I haven't been in here for about three weeks with a with a video, so I can't believe how tall they are. Absolutely huge now, I've nearly reached the top of the greenhouse, so they're just loving this weather. Now these are these Marmanda grew, which are a beefsteak outdoor. And I've never seen such a crop. Oh, just trying to get the camera in. Of tomatoes in my life. Beef steaks, they're all over it. Absolutely millions, and it's a bush one. There's one down there somewhere. They're just nestling everywhere. Because it's a bush, you don't even have to trim it or anything or cordon it, you just leave it as a big mess, sprawling mess, and it just seems to go bonkers. So, looking pretty good so far. That's one of my chilies. One of these Joe's Long, it's called. It's supposed to produce like a foot long chilies, so. Plant looks healthy enough. Got a few flowers coming now, so hopefully she'll get some big long chilies. And these are just my normal Shirley tomatoes. Got some nice trusses on. Coming a bit further up. So really, everything's doing fantastic in this uh, lovely warm sunshine we've been having. Another one there, another Shirley. The cherry ones are pretty small actually this year. They're not producing that many millions of flowers, but no. So that, as of yet, as of yet, and these are some of my small, like, compact chilies. These are called Prairie Fire, and some of these are just starting to produce the first little chilies there. So all in all, they just love this weather, absolutely love it. So these are my seed onions from last year that I've put to seed. So there's plenty of seeds coming on there. So like I say, everything's just loving the weather, especially the tomatoes and stuff like that, and chilies. So that's the greenhouse, we'll just have a nip up to the plot now and have a look up there. So from one greenhouse to another, this is me really neglected one up at the plot, that's just sort of as you can see. Some of the trees, the grass is about 8 feet tall and I just don't really look after it. I just chucked all my reject stuff in here and my spare stuff but this stuff's doing really well remarkably. These are the, um, like a dwarf bush type butternut squash that I'm just growing in, in grow bags. Because butternut squash can be an absolutely massive plant, so I thought some. Uh, there was somebody else off YouTube, I've forgotten who it was now. I'm sure they'll remind me who suggested them, who's growing them, so I got some as well. But they seem to be doing alright. There's a few little miniature fruit appearing, so we'll see how we get on. And these are just some more tomatoes, they seem to be doing as well in here as in the proper greenhouse, so to speak. Especially with cherry ones. I've actually got some ripening up there already. Don't know how they're doing it because if you look outside, it's in virtual darkness. So anyway, just got to show you. This is another squash plant I've got in the corner there, and one I've got another one here. And they're absolutely taking over the place, but they're starting to form the first little squashes. One on there, and another one somewhere. There we go, another one. They're all random squashes. These you get a packet with mixed winter squash. It says. Now last year I got a white one, a yellow one and some green ones, so presumably that's a cream one this year. And then this gherkin that I planted, well I've never seen anything as vigorous as this in my life, it's just taken over, it's growing all over the place, up the side of the greenhouse. And that's, <laughs> I think that might be a bit big for a gherkin, but that's what they like, and they're absolutely everywhere. Little ones starting to fall. Anyway, I thought I'd try and eat one. Just as it is raw, and it's they're not the most uh, tastiest of veg. It's a bit like a, a dry textured cucumber, full of seeds. So I don't think I'll be going, growing them again unless I can find a way of pickling them. And anyway, these are my proper cucumbers, just tr just trailing about on the floor. I'm just starting to get some little ones set now. That's the market more or birthless, I think it's called. And then my crystal apple, which are the little tiny round golden apple shaped ones there's a few flowers coming on I think that might be the first first little one come in there but they're a bit slow really so anyway that's just my neglected greenhouse but like I say even with neglect stuff seems to be growing all right we'll just nip off over to proper plot now anyway this is where I, I grew my pumpkins last year and I just it was just bare soil I wasn't going to grow a pumpkin again so I just chuck loads of pound chop wild flowers in and it's come up with a hell of a display. 
just amazing. There's about two pounds worth of wildflower seeds in there, and all sorts of things have come up. It's full of bees now, so There's little corn flowers, Californian poppies, God knows what, but uh, it's quite a good show for, for two quid, I think. It's better than looking at a patch of bare soil anyway. These are some of those daft uh, condor potatoes, biggest potato in the world. I'm just growing one in a big pit. And what I'll do, I'll have a scrat about underneath and remove as many potatoes as I can and just leave one or two. So then all the energy goes into one or two potatoes. And then hopefully you get about a seven pound potato really lucky. If that's just for a silly class at Harrogate, heaviest potato class. I've only got one in, well a couple in, so. Right, we'll jump over into the old oh, marrow patch where the marrow has absolutely gone bonkers in this weather it's about 15 foot long now and I think I've got some fruit set which is the all important thing I hand pollinated it the other day and there we have ow, spiky plant the first marrow, only small but if I show you a video of this in about two weeks I bet it'll be about £20 and I'm not kidding you so Hold me to that one, I'll show you it in about two weeks and if it doesn't die or rot off I'll have a, we'll have a see and I've got another one going there, another big plant and it, yeah, it definitely has set because it's bigger than it was the other day so there we go about six inches long now so that's day one of the giant marrows this year so I'll give it two weeks and I bet they'll be 20 pound in two weeks hopefully they've all all goes well, they're absolutely amazing to grow, they're just so funny. You come up one day and they're like, they've grown about three inches in length and they've put on about three pound, it's just uh, it's quite hilarious. Anyway, that's my marrow patch. What have we got? Garlic's still green, just starting to go yellow but it's still be bulbing up so there's no point in me pulling it until it's starting to topple over because I want the bulbs to be as big as possible. Onions are just not bulbing up, they really need some rain but I'm not going to wish for any rain. So they're just the normal onions. And then there's the kale again. Boring stuff, but it keeps you going over winter. Oh, right, we'll just have a jump over here. I'll do it all in one shot. I can't be bothered to edit this video. I've got a, like I said the other day, I've got a bird's nest in here. Blackbird or a thrush. I'll just see if you can hear the chicks. I don't know. I could last night. No, they're not that thick, are they? Anyway, I'll leave them, I'll leave them be, I don't want to disturb them. Poppies are still coming slowly. But they're starting to fade now. This is the other wildflower bit. Got this giant borage in there. That's self-seeded from somewhere. Lovely plants, borage. Right, where are we going now? Right, these are my show potatoes in bags. I can't even see, I haven't got a clue where the bags are now. So watering them is a bit of a trial and error job. One thing I've noticed, they've got loads of pests on the top. If you look at the top, they're all been chewed. And I had a look and it's full of capsid bug. And in fact, there's one. Where is it? Put my finger on it. There, little buggers. I'll try and find one for you. Where are they? There's just, just gone under there. There it is. I can't see it now. There, see if I can get it now. No, they scoot off. Anyway, they're just like little tiny green green bugs. Like little green grasshoppery things. And they're absolutely covered in it. But apparently there's one again. I'll try and film that. There it is on that leaf. There. So that's what they look like. Well, apparently they don't do too much damage, so they've just sort of chewed the tops. It doesn't look too bad, so if that's all they do, then I'll leave them. I don't want to spray them anyway, I'm going to eat them. The potatoes, that is. These are some of the outdoor show carrots. They're doing really well, just because of the weather. Right, then we'll go on to the polytunnel again, which was the scene. Hey, look, look at that. Spider-Man. Easily pleased. Right, I'll go into the polytunnel now, where remarkably a miracle has taken place. When all my onions had bolted, when I showed you those, and I thought, oh, they're not going to, that's it, they've finished. 
but for some strange reason I pulled all the seed heads out and they still kept and they've still kept bulbing up. Get my lens in. If you look at the size of them now, some of them are about 18 inch circumference, about three getting up to three and a bit pounds. They've still got the seed head in the middle, so coming exhibition time they probably won't dress up very well when you have to tie the necks, but they've still grown, which is just for some reason strange. I thought they'd stop growing. Right, this is the big boy. This is now nearly getting off of 20 inches in circumference. It's a monstrous thing, and this hasn't gone to seed, so this should keep growing properly. It's got loads of big leaves on, so that's doing really well. Big carrots in the barrels, absolutely still flying along. Just watering the hell out of them at the moment because they don't have to uh, use some water in this hot weather. Same again with the carrots, long, long carrots in the barrels. I've never seen them as tall as that in my life before, myself. Humongous, so if nothing else happens to these, there should be some monstrous carrots beneath come show time. And I'll do a few videos of pulling those out. So basically, it's a miracle. <laughs> they kept on growing. So if, if they're not good for shows, at least they'll be more onion to eat anyway. But if you can see, the cracking size now. And still growing. Right, I'll just, uh, I've sown a bit of purple sprouting broccoli for, for next year now. Some early purple sprout, and this was called Rudolph, I think it was called. And I've got a heck of a crop this spring, so I've just put some in now. I'll probably plant those out, well, whenever they're ready, really. So that's it for the old uh, broccoli for next year. A few shallots I pulled up for the shows. A couple more of my prairie fire chilli plants. Oh, yeah, these are the French beans, which are now, I'm just starting to crop these. They're all over now, absolutely millions. They start from the bottom, obviously, but you just get absolutely armfuls of them. That's Cobra, the variety is Cobra. And as I said, I grow them up the canes and then up along the roof like that. And I'm actually now growing, now one's reached the, the top, I'm gonna to try and grow it along. I'm gonna try and get right to the end of my polytunnel, which will be about 30 foot long. Just as a bit of a novelty. Cause yet in a pot. It's going a bit yellow for some reason on some of the leaves. I think it's just getting so hot and drying out every day. But it's producing absolutely millions of cores yet. It's just pumping them out. I'm starting to get sick of them. I thought if I grew them in a pot, I wouldn't get as many, but you just seem to get as many. And the plant's absolutely enormous. So what else have we got? A few more squashes. This stupid squash that's taking over the place again. Shielding all the cucumbers again. So anyway, that's about it in the polytunnel. Now these are my spuds, which are just getting bigger by the second, seemingly. They're absolutely crazy, the size of them. I've just put my, I've put my spade up against the edge, and you can see the height of them. They're in pots, but they're absolutely bananas. They're nearly up to my chest. They're absolutely flooding those because, because of the weather, so... This is a uh, Golden Wonder, Sarpo Mira, and some, what else have we got in there? A few pink fir apples and some more Charlotte new ones. And the weather has just made the whole plot just go bonkers. Look at it, it's just growing fantastically now. I couldn't be happier. And my garlic, this is the uh, Solent White. It's just not enormous. They're getting off a two and a half foot tall and the stalks are so thick. I've been watering those to try and get the bulbs to be bigger. So if they're as good as if they're as good below as they are on top, should have some cracking bulbs. What else? Carrots are nearly ready. These are early not. They started poking their heads out of the soil, so what I've done is like that. Just to put, push a bit of soil over the top to stop them going green. They're not poisonous when they're green like potatoes, but they're not the best. Beetroot, I've been eating loads of beetroot, that's just absolutely flown on in the last week or two with this weather, even though I've not watered them, so these are the ones I transplanted in from modules, which I've never done before, and it just seems to be the way to grow them, I've never seen stuff grow as fast. Uh, what else have we got? The shallots are grown from seed, which I did, I did last year and I was so amazed with them, I've done them again this year. They're starting to bulb up now, they're getting quite big, and they're all looking about the same. 
I've got two rows, so there's about 80 in there. And they were a revelation last year. And what else? Second lot of lettuce. There's the first lot, there's some iceberg. I've nearly got through them now actually, so I've timed it quite well. Put a few little turnips in, because I do like carrot and turnip mashed up. <laughs> and the broccoli, this is at Aquilees. I've been taking it now, if you see I've cut the main head and the side shoots are coming. And I cut that one and then look at that, you get three more giant side shoots. The same with that one over there. So it's a cracking variety. The tiny little plants, but you get an enormous crop. These are the leeks, could do with a bit of water in, but they've taken well since I transplanted them. And the peas, which are the longest growing peas I've ever known in my life, I planted these in April, obviously when it was freezing cold. I'm just now starting to get the first pods, first green shaft. So hopefully we should have some peas shortly. And we should have, it's bloody nearly middle of July, isn't it? So no, so things are doing pretty well. And I'm just about got my first cabbage. This is just a greyhound cabbage. Didn't think it'd work, I thought it'd actually bolt to seed in this sort of weather, but it's not, it's hearted up nicely. It's not really cabbage eating weather though, is it, when it's like 30 degrees, but it's all, it's all good. Like I said, great little icebergs, only got three left now, and a couple of those red ones, so just about timed it right, I think. But I really couldn't be more chuffed, everything's just gone absolutely nuts with this weather, sunniest weather I've known for years. So that's about it, I think. Getting on for the middle of July, things are doing really, really well, weather's set fair for another week, so for once I couldn't be happier. That's about it folks, see you later.